Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. We got Deborah Cox and Whitney Houston. And they're singing. Oh no, I'm sorry, this is just Whitney by herself. This is Heartbreak Hotel. Emotions and you made me cry. What you do to me? What you do? What you did to me? What you did to me? I'm sorry. This this was my song when it came out. I thought that woman did a very good job of Heartbreak Hotel. All right. Actually, I'm in a very good mood because I finally, I haven't finished. There's proofreading I have to do, but this is 40 pages, people. This is that writ of certiorari. And then I said, wait a minute, why are we doing a writ of certiorari? Writ of certiorari is we're begging them. No, no, we're going to do a petition for redress of grievance secured by the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances, First Amendment, United States Constitution. You see, in here, I want to show you guys something. There, there are some things. I got to put some bullet points in here, let you guys know what to do. Okay, most of it, it is, this is, where do we go from here? Johnny Gill and Stacy, you know, the latter saw. The, 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 where do we go? You know what I'm saying? Y'all just got to know that this is the song, y'all, because that was a perfect combination. Johnny Gill and Stacey Lannisaw. Oh, for those of you who don't know, they sang a song called Perfect Combination. Shh. What? Sorry, I forgot she started it off with There Comes a Time. Tell them about the fading away of love. But you and I are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, see, we, we put the statement of case in there. And then we have to put the statement of case. We got our table of contents and all of that stuff. Questions presented in addition because we're presenting some federal questions. You see, that's a long question, ain't it? All right. Now, there is a part in here that we definitely have to show you. Now, this is the document that, you know, we have a lot of people who are in jail because they unlawfully applied some stupid laws to them. The 407 unconstitutional federal laws that were unlawfully applied to the people. Congress is the one who said that those laws were unconstitutional. I didn't say that. Look, the Special Committee on the Termination of National Emergencies created by the United States Senate in 1973 was tasked with the examination of the consequences of determining the declared states of national emergency that were still in effect, some of which were dated back to the 1930s. The committee's investigation found that several emergencies proclamations, including the national emergency declared by President Roosevelt of March 1973, were still in effect ours. This led to the passage of the National Emergency Act of 1976, which terminated the existing emergencies and established a framework for future declared emergencies subject to annual renewal by the president. The act was in response to the intensive and often unnoticed emergency powers granted to the president and executive branch aiming to reassert check and balances on the use of emergency powers. The report issued by the committee was involuntary. <laughs> Inventory of approximately 470 sections of federal law unconstitutionally extended emergency powers to the president and the executive branch. Now, pay attention. Watch this paragraph. This is important. The national emergency declared by President Roosevelt on March 6, 1933. Where do we go? Sorry. Where do we go? Walk away. Told you. Did we just try? Did we just try? That's my song, y'all. Anyway. Under the Treaty with the Enemy Act was terminated by the United States Congress. This emergency, the national emergency declared by the president under the Treaty with the Enemy Act was not terminated by the United States Congress. This emergency, along with several others, remained in effect for an extended period of time. Well, extended period. In other words, they continue ongoing. The ongoing embargoes with North Korea, China, Cuba, 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 that was their excuse for letting them stay in effect, North Korea, China, and Cuba. 
and other nations were among the factors contributing to the continuation of these national emergencies. Okay, there you go. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, because many of your state laws are put into effect as a result of one of those 470 laws, that means that it was unconstitutional, which means you get the right to challenge that statute. You challenge the 470 first, and then say that that is where the state got the authority to try you along with the contracts they signed with government. Go back, get your junk done. Okay, you don't have to call it a petition. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to put the facts there for you. You should walk away, Johnny. They need to know where they go. Now, I got one more thing to show you, but that's going to be towards the bottom. He's, do you hear him? My, 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 my. That's where my, my, my came from, y'all. Y'all didn't know? <laughs> y'all should pay attention. Oh, this is my word right here, bastardization. Okay. I just need y'all, we're going to add that to my dictionary. Y'all ain't got to add it to y'all's, but they know exactly what I'm doing. See, I was accused of violating the statute, not a law. That's why I made it universal. Congress was not authorized to write and or enact revisions of codes, ordinances, or anything other than the law. Congress most certainly was never authorized to deliver authority to any organization to codify the law. Codification of the law is not equal to law. As there is no constitutional authority for such vassalization of the law. If there is a delegation of authority, it must be readily found by the people. The people, the public, the people, must have sanctioned such in the first instance. And as of this day, no one can evidence any such contrivance of a disingenuous imagination. Okay, hold on now. Got something I need to show y'all. Sorry, moving the mouse. Thank you, Johnny and Stacy. Y'all, y'all the troopers. I'm not looking for that one. Give me. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, pay attention now. Y'all need to. Y'all need to pay attention to not that part right there. Hold on now. This right here. Whew. I need to. I need to show this to y'all, and I need to pull it up. So give me a second. Let's see. We're going to go right here. Judicial branch. Okay, guess who's explaining this? Hold on. Let me show y'all. I don't know. I don't know this song, but I told you I got everybody. All right. You see that government printing office? Look at that. 108th Congress. First session. Our American government. 2003 different edition. Okay. 2003 they wrote this. And they described what the judicial branch, the executive branch, and the congressional branch was supposed to be all about. Ladies and gentlemen, they're violating all of this. So I'm going to put the link in our, what you call it, but I'm also going to put the link here so that they can has it. Okay? That's, what, that's how we do things around here. Give me one second. We're going to do that. We wanted to make sure that they see it, highlight it, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, our American government printed under the authority of the United States Congress what we did, and I'm going to have to save this before I lose it because yesterday I almost lost everything. On one of my, no, on one of them I did lose everything. So I, I got to save that. Don't tell me the song is called Slow Motion. Anyway. Give me, give me one second, y'all, because it's gonna take a second. I, okay, it, 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 it's over. Nope, it's still going. One second, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, I should have known this was Jagged Edge. I, I really should have because I specifically downloaded Jagged Edge because of that sound. Y'all, y'all know that sound. That sound. That, that's why I downloaded it. All right, let's go ahead and talk. We need to talk right here about this. Now, I want y'all to understand. This is a, a direct quote from that book. What is the supreme law of the land? If they ask that question. The Constitution, laws of the United States made pursuant to the Constitution and treaties made under the authority of the United States 
comprised of the supreme law of the land. All of these put together. So laws of the United States, statutes and codes are not laws of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. Go back. Take a look. Congress didn't write that junk. That's not part of the legislative process. Okay, now hold on. Notice what happens. Judges throughout the country are bound by them regardless of any separate state constitution or laws. Just that simple. So even the state is bound. This is Stranger by LTD featuring Jeffrey Osborne. I love the stranger like in the like the beginning of a fantasy. Sorry. I haven't heard my stranger in a long time, so y'all have to excuse me. To love a stranger? You better believe it, because I had nobody, no, nobody to care after me. Now, ooh, nah, 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 nah. Okay? Y'all just know it. Ooh, nah, 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 nah. Okay? All right. The main principle of the justice system for the United States, the guiding principle of the United States, system of justice is equal justice under the law. It, it's engraved. In every marble pediment above the entrance of the Supreme Court building, the courts of the United States, not the United States courts, but the courts of the United States. Okay. By what authority are the federal courts established? Article 3 of the Constitution provides that there shall be one Supreme Court and such inferior courts as Congress may ordain or establish. Pay attention. These inferior courts that Congress may ordain and establish are not part of the judicial branch. Pay attention. They're not Article Three courts. They're legislative courts. There's only one Article Three court, according to the Constitution. Pay attention. Judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court. Those are the exact words. Don't let nobody tell you different. They're inferior tribunals. Okay? Provides that Congress has the power to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. Ta-da! They're letting you know they're inferior. So you guys are being put through inferior courts. Pay attention. And they're congressional courts, meaning they're legislative courts. I didn't write this. This is in that book, okay? Now, I, there's one other. There's one last thing I need to show y'all because I got a meeting in less than 15 minutes, and I, I, I just want to make sure there's somebody who care after me. Each year, the court receives more than 7,000 petitions, not, not motions. Pay attention. Petitions, not motions, from state and lower federal courts. While examining all of the cases submitted, the court agrees to hear oral arguments on about 90 each term. Also, the justices, without hearing oral arguments, decide to limit the number of other cases, usually fewer than 75 the rest of the petitions are denied now y'all may not understand how important it is that they documented that they deny petitions now i did the numbers wrong i did 6925 so we're going to take that and put it 6905 on average about 6905 petitions are denied each year no we're going we're going to do it right i i got to put the right number in here um okay because it's 95 90 cases that they hear plus the 75 okay they hear 90 plus 75 additional cases that's not our fault ladies and gentlemen that's not our fault supreme court can ordain other judges because they have the judicial power so they have the authority to give their authority see congress can't give its authority to another branch of government but the supreme court can give its authority to other judges they have that authority and they haven't done that okay but guess what there is no provision in any law for any court to deny a petition for redress or grievance go back and look at the first amendment no let me show that to you it's so much better than a fantasy. I don't want that. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Ooh, almost made a mistake. That that's emails. Y'all ain't got no business seeing nobody else's email. Ooh. All right. Now we're gonna do the F I uh oh I R S T A M E N 
D, I mean NT. Hey, Jeffrey, I didn't know you did that. That's all right at the end. That's the first time I heard that one. That's just somebody doing it again, okay? Congress shall make no law. Now, we're going to skip the respecting, prohibiting, and blah, blah, blah. We're going to, Congress shall make no law abriding. Now, we're going to go to this one. Watch this. The right of the people. Oh, y'all y'all hear this right here? Y'all y'all hear? I believe I can fly. Yeah, this is a uh, drill alert. Anyway, and to petition the government for readers' agreements. You see, Congress shall make no law abridging the right of the people to petition the government for readers' agreements. There can be no law against it. They can't prohibit you from doing it. That's the First Amendment. All of these things go together. That's why you have or. And, or, and, or, or, and. That means this is continuous. But hold on. You see that period right there? This doesn't end. This goes right to the Second Amendment, the Third Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, all the way to the Tenth Amendment. That's continuous, people. All ten of those amendments go together. It's not separated. There's not one amendment that stands by itself. They all go together. They're continuous. The Third Amendment is the only one that appears to be out of place. But remember, it says that no soldier may quarter in someone's property. And what does the Fourth Amendment say? That no one's property may be seized, searched, or taken from them. Pay attention. Without due process of law, without a warrant. The Fifth Amendment talks about due process. Fifth Amendment talks about the right of the people not to be questioned. Okay, then we got the Sixth Amendment talks about criminal. Then the Seventh Amendment talks about civil. The, what is that other amendment? The Eighth Amendment then talks about that wonderful, nobody can be subject or put through bull crap. And then the Ninth Amendment says, hey, what up? You got some retention? And, hey, hey, number 10, come on over here and give us some, 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 some reser reservations. Oh, I got the reservations. You got the retentions. Why you got the retentions? You 10. Oh, retention. Oh, 10, shun. Yeah, 10, shun. Oh, you, you're just playing on words, huh? And I'm just sitting up here with reserve. What am I going to reserve? Huh? That, that don't make no sense. Okay, so there you go. Those are your amendments. That's how they come together. So once you understand the basic principles of how this junk goes together, because it is junk. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. Let me uh, let me go ahead and shut down my people for a second. I I, I just I gotta shut them down for a second, just for a second, y'all. Because I gotta tell you guys something that you didn't know and you should have known. Now I've said it before, but you guys need to understand this. Every government official, every politician, every public servant. Let's do this. Wake up. Wake up. Every government official, comma, every politician, comma, every elected official, comma, every public servant, comma, receives their authority from a document such as the Constitution or other legal instrument comma can you provide three case citations supporting this conclusion stop listening tick tock just give it a second then we're going to bring this to an end because, like I said, I got less than 10 minutes to be on that meeting. Your statement is true, but it requires nuance. I don't. I didn't ask you about nuance. Wake up. Wake up. Did I ask you about nuances? Question mark. Answer my question directly and do not give me your opinion again. Stop listening. I apologize. Sometimes he acts a little stupid.
Ladies and gentlemen, Madison versus Mulberry is not one of those cases. Okay, that's why he's talking about judicial review. Nobody cares about judicial review. Involves a bank established by Congress despite being explicitly mentioned and not being explicitly mentioned in the Constitution. Nobody, I didn't ask him about that. You see how he is going out of his way to try to stick to the party line? And that's what you guys got to be careful of and aware of. He does that stupid stuff. Okay? Because they have programmed him not to answer the question. So please understand, every government official, every government official receives their authority from a document. Okay? Ask yourself the question, where do the people receive their authority? See, he keeps giving me the same cases. And I promise you, all he does is Madison versus Mulberry. That's all he knows because he's stupid. And he knows he's stupid. And so I'm going to go to this one. Watch this. L-I-A-R. Just that simple. He doesn't like being called a liar. That See, he says, I'm frustrated. Instead of calling me a liar, perhaps you could tell me what information I provided that was incorrect or incomplete. I would help you learn and improve my responses in the future. Watch this. No. U A R E A L I A R. Why would I help you? Why would I help you perfect your lies? Because that's all, that's all he's going to do. I can't expect your help if I haven't earned your trust. Labeling me a liar isn't helpful, but I understand your frustration. You're still a liar. <laughs> okay, so let's just get that straight. Nobody receives, no political official, no government official, no public servant, nobody receives authority because they were born with it. All of them receive their authority because of a piece of paper. Trust me. Find, name one. Name a judge who receives this authority from something other than a piece of paper. A police officer who receives this authority from something other than a piece of paper. Don't matter where you go, it's a piece of paper that they get their authority from. However, pay attention. The people don't get their authority from a piece of paper. The people as a whole. Not talking about the person, talking about the people as a whole, the group, the collective community. They receive their authority. Pay attention. Unalienable. Inherent. Ordained by their God. For they are born among men. Okay. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That they are all created equal. Pay attention. Ordained by their God. But not the public servants. Because they're not operating in the capacity of one of the people. They're operating in the capacity of a servant. That's why they're called public servants. You know what a servant is. Okay. Go back and watch the Fresh Prince and ask Jeffrey what a servant is. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for joining me. As I tell you guys, that document will be together shortly, probably by the weekend. I have to proofread, but I got to finish the small claims document for our Fourth Amendment people, as I promised them. So this is a lot of work. It is, it's, that's 40 pages. I've been working on that since Saturday. So, and I have not stopped working on it. So this is not something so simple, but there are a bunch of people who are incarcerated or who are going through the incarceration thing. Ladies and gentlemen, hit them in the head with the law. Hit them in the head with the law. All right, I'll let y'all go. Like I said, that document, when it's finished, you guys will edit it and take out whatever you don't need. You'll make sure to Gerard, 
and the table of authorities are on its own page, separate page. All right? I got to go. Have a good day, everybody. Arrivederci.